Welcome to this advanced demo lesson where you're going to get the experience of implementing a dynamic, highly available, accelerated VPN which uses BGP for route advertisement. Now with this demo you won't need to have any local infrastructure. We're going to create both sides of this infrastructure using CloudFormation. The AWS side on the left and the on-premises side on the right will both be created within AWS using a single one-click deployment. So rather than you having to have your own on-premises infrastructure, this is going to be simulated within AWS. You'll be configuring two Linux-based VPN servers which use StrongSwan and a system known as FRR to do BGP. You're going to create the environments, configure the AWS side, then create the IPsec tunnels and then add BGP. And don't worry, I'll be explaining what everything does at each step along the way. We're going to do the demo in stages. It's going to be easier to understand this way and at the start and end of every stage I'll explain how we started, what we did and what the end state of that particular stage is. This is what we're going to configure in stage 1. The AWS environment on the left includes a VPC, two subnets, and each of those includes a single EC2 instance. It has a transit gateway created and attached to that VPC. Default routes pointing at the transit gateway and security groups which allow connections from the IP range used within the on-premises environment. The simulated on-premises environment on the right is a realistic simulation of a normal small business network. A public network with the two VPN appliances, Router 1 and Router 2, and these will be running Ubuntu 18 with StrongSwan and FRR. This network also has two other subnets, each containing an on-premises server. Now it's important at this stage that you understand that while the on-premises environment is running inside AWS, conceptually you need to ignore that fact. All of the steps that you'll do in this advanced demo work equally well when the on-premises environment is on-premises. I've designed this mini project to be realistic to the kind of scenarios that you're going to experience in the real world. The one-click deployment link that's attached to this video will create this architecture. And then, after that's completed, we're going to create two customer gateway objects inside AWS which represent the routers running on-premises. So let's go ahead and apply this one-click deployment. It's going to take a few minutes and we need it to be complete before moving on. So you'll need to be logged into your AWS account with an identity which has full admin permissions. And as always, you need to have the Northern Virginia region selected. So attached to this video is a one-click deployment link. So go ahead and open that. That's going to take you to the Quick Create Stack page. Everything should be pre-populated. You'll just need to scroll down to the bottom, check this box and click on Create Stack. Now we need this stack to be in a create complete state before we continue, so go ahead and pause the video and resume once the stack moves into a create complete state. Now that that's done, we need to create two customer gateway objects within AWS. These objects represent the physical on-premises routers. They tell AWS how to connect with them, so let's go ahead and create those. Before we do that though, go ahead and click on the Outputs tab. This shows you the outputs from the one-click deployment, and these are important pieces of information. This shows you the private and public IP addresses of the on-premises Router 1 and Router 2, and you're going to need all of this information in future parts of this demo series, so we're going to leave this open. Type VPC into the search box and open that in a new tab. Once here, we're going to create two customer gateway objects, one of them representing Router 1 and one of them representing Router 2. So scroll down on the left menu, under Virtual Private Network VPN, select Customer Gateways. 
and then click on Create Customer Gateway. Now these are logical representations of physical customer premises routers and to create them we need to enter a few pieces of information. We need a name, we need an IP address, we also need one piece of BGP information. So first for the name I want you to enter on-prem hyphen router one. So this represents router one running within the simulated on-premises environment and we need the IP address of this router. So this is the public IP version 4 IP address. If you go back to the tab that you've got open on the CloudFormation console on the outputs tab, we need the router one public address. So copy that into your clipboard and paste that into the IP address box. And once you do that, you'll need to enter a BGP ASN. So this type of VPN connection needs a unique ASN at the AWS side and the customer premises side. Most ASNs are publicly allocated, but there are a number of private ASNs that you're able to use. So these start from 64,512 and end at 65,534. Now these ASNs that we're entering represent the ASN that's used on the simulated on-premises environment. AWS will use their own, but we have the option of picking our own ASN. And we're going to use 65016. You could use any number in this range, but this demo lesson is configured to use this particular ASN. So go ahead and enter 65016. Scroll down and click on Create Customer Gateway. So that represents the Customer Gateway object for Router 1, and we're going to do the same process for Router 2. So again, click on Create Customer Gateway. This time, logically, we'll name it OnPrem-Router2. We'll need its public IP address, so go back to the CloudFormation tab. This time, copy the Router2 public address into your clipboard. Enter that under IP address and we'll use the same customer side BGP ASN. So that's 65016. And this will allow the customer premises and AWS side to exchange routes using BGP once we've configured that later in the demo. So at that point, everything looks good. Go ahead and click on Create Customer Gateway. So now you've got two customer gateway objects created and these represent the routers within your simulated on-premises environment. And don't worry if the IP addresses differ within your implementation because of course you and I will have different IP addresses because IP version 4 addresses, certainly public ones, have to be unique. Now at this point, before we finish up this stage of the demo, we're just going to verify that we have no connectivity between the AWS side and the on-premises side. Now to do that, type EC2 into the search box and open that in a new tab. Then click on Instances, and I'll just expand the name column to make it easier to see, and then I'll sort by name. Now you're going to have a total of six EC2 instances, four of which are inside the simulated on-premises environment, and two of which are within AWS. So I want you to go ahead and select AWS-EC2-B, which is an instance running within the AWS environment. And I want you to scroll down, find the private IP address of this instance, and copy that into your clipboard. Once you have that, unselect that and select the on-prem-server2. Right click, go to connect, select session manager, and hit connect to be connected directly to this private on-premises server. Now we're using Session Manager to connect, which means we don't require these instances to have any form of public internet access. And once we're connected to this instance, I'll want you to go ahead and type ping and then a space, and then paste in the IP address of instance B within the AWS environment. And once you have, go ahead and press enter you'll almost certainly find that the private IP address that you're pinging is different than mine, although in theory there is a small chance it could be the same, but in any case, you won't receive a ping response because there's no connectivity between the AWS environment and the simulated on-premises environment. Now at this point, you've completed all of the steps that I need you to in stage one of this demo lesson. You've created the AWS and on-premises environments using CloudFormation, and you've created 
created two customer gateway objects which represent the physical on-premises routers. So right now we have no connectivity between these two different environments, but we do have the starting point to configure that connectivity. Now at this point, this is the end of this stage of the mini project. You can use this as an opportunity to take a short break or continue immediately to the next stage of the mini project. So when you're ready, go ahead and move on to the next stage. Welcome back to stage two of this mini project. In this stage, you're going to create the AWS side of the VPN architecture. You're going to create two VPN attachments for the transit gateway, and the transit gateway already exists. This was created with a one-click deployment. You'll be selecting the accelerated VPN option, which means that AWS will create accelerated VPN endpoints, two of these per connection. Now, these accelerated endpoints provide transit back to the transit gateway over the AWS global network. This process also creates VPN connections, which can be used to connect the accelerated VPN endpoints to the on-premises routers using IPsec tunnels, two per connection. Now, the tunnels won't be active at this stage because that's something that will require additional configuration. But in this stage, we'll be configuring the AWS side. So let's move across to the console and get started. And once again, there's a full set of step-by-step -step instructions for this part of the demo lesson attached to this video. So you can either follow along with this video or follow along with the text-based instructions, whichever you prefer. So now that we're back at the AWS console, let's go ahead and close down these tabs that we no longer need. So we can close down Session Manager, we can close down the EC2 console. We're going to be using the VPC console, but again, we'll close it down just to keep things tidy and we'll reopen all of the tabs that we'll be using in this stage of the demo. We can also close down the CloudFormation tab. And then once we're at the main AWS management console, click on the services dropdown, type VPC, open that in a new tab. And then once that's open, type CloudFormation and open that in a new tab as well, because we'll need both of those for this part of the demo. Now we're going to be creating two Transit Gateway VPN attachments. One of these attachments will connect the AWS environment to the on-premises router one, and the other one will connect the AWS environment to on-premises router two. And each one of those connections will include a pair of IPsec tunnels. So we're going to have a total of four tunnels, two to each customer router. So let's open up the VPC console and then on the menu on the left, just scroll down until you find transit gateways and click on transit gateway attachments. Now you'll notice that you already have one transit gateway attachment and that's fine. That's the attachment that connects the transit gateway to the existing AWS VPC. So the way that transit gateway is architected is that it needs attachments for everything that it will route traffic between. So in order that the VPC can connect to anything else, it needs its own attachment. At this point, we're going to create the VPN attachments. So go ahead and click on Create Transit Gateway Attachment. First, we'll need to select the transit gateway that this attachment will use. So click in the Transit Gateway ID dropdown and select the A4L TGW Transit Gateway. This was created on your behalf by the CloudFormation template. We're going to be creating a VPN attachment, so select VPN under Attachment Type. Now this is going to create a VPN connection. One side of that connection is going to connect to AWS and the other side is going to connect to a specific customer gateway. And so we need to pick the customer gateway that this VPN attachment will use. So scroll down and then click in the customer gateway ID dropdown and select on-prem hyphen router one, because this VPN attachment is going to connect AWS to on-premises router one. Now make sure the dynamic option, which requires BGP, is selected under routing options. 
And because we're creating an accelerated VPN, which uses the AWS Global Accelerator and the AWS Global Network, you need to pick Enable Acceleration. And this is done on a per VPN attachment basis. So check that box. Everything else is looking good, so scroll down and click on Create Attachment. Now we need to do that process again for On-Prem Router 2. So go ahead and click on Create Transit Gateway Attachment. We'll be selecting the same transit gateway. Select VPN for attachment type, Customer Gateway Existing. Click on the Customer Gateway ID dropdown and make sure that you pick On-Prem hyphen Router 2. Again, for routing options, it needs to be dynamic, requires BGP, and you also need to enable acceleration. So make sure all of those options are set correctly, scroll down and click on create attachment. Now at this point, that's creating those two transit gateway attachments. And the effect of this is to create two site to site VPN connections. To see that, go ahead and scroll slightly up on the menu on the left, and select site to site VPN connections. And you should see two different VPN connections in the pending state. Now, one of these connections relates to the on premises router one, and one of these connections relates to on premises router two. And for each of these, we need to download a configuration file. So to make this easier, on the menu on the left, look for Customer Gateways under Virtual Private Network. Right click on that and then open that in a new tab. Now this will show you the Customer Gateway records for each of the on-premises routers. And you'll see next to that a Customer Gateway ID. Now this Customer Gateway ID will match the equivalent field under Site to Site VPN connections. And this will allow you to pick which connection relates to on-premises router 1 and which relates to on-premises router 2. So first, I want you to identify which one of your connections relates to on-prem router 1. So on the customer gateway screen, just memorize the last four digits of the customer gateway ID. Then go back to site to site VPN connections and identify which row that matches. Select that row and then click on download configuration. Now you're able to download this configuration in a range of formats that suits different VPN appliances. Because we're configuring Linux instances to be generic routers, under vendor go ahead and select generic. Leave everything else as default, it should be platform generic, software, vendor, agnostic, and for Ike version it should be Ike v1. Go ahead and click on download, locate that download, and I want you to go ahead and rename the file from the random file name that's picked by AWS, and I want you to call this one connection1config.txt, and do that all in caps. So this is the connection configuration for VPN connection one between AWS and on-prem router one. And then we're going to repeat that process for the other connection. So go back to customer gateways and identify the customer gateway line for on-prem router two. Note down the customer gateway ID, then go back to site to site VPN Select the relevant row for that customer gateway ID. It should be the other one than you just did. So select that, click on download configuration. Again, change vendor to generic. Everything else should be default. Click download and then rename that file to connection2config.txt. And this is the connection configuration file for AWS to on-prem router 2. And very shortly, we're going to be extracting configuration information from both of these configuration files. Now, at this point, you'll need to extract some important configuration items from the VPN connection configuration documents. You'll use these in the next stage to configure the on-premises infrastructure. Before we do that, I want to quickly cover what an IPsec tunnel is. When you create a VPN connection or a transit gateway VPN attachment, you're actually creating two tunnels. Both of these tunnels go between AWS and one customer gateway. 
But at the AWS side, they go to different equipment. There are two AWS endpoints in different availability zones, and this ensures from AWS's perspective that it's highly available. You're going to see and hear a lot of terms that you might not have come across before. When talking about tunnels, you might have heard the ends referred to as left and right, customer and AWS, local and remote. They all refer to two ends of the VPN tunnels. A tunnel is a network connection between two locations which is encrypted. A tunnel goes between two endpoints, left and right, AWS and customer, local and remote. They all mean the same thing. One side is you and the other is the other party. At the customer side, generally you have one IP address on your customer router and this is called the customer outside IP. Outside because it's outside of the tunnel. It uses a normal internet routable IP. At the AWS side, each AWS endpoint has an AWS outside IP. Remember, there are two AWS endpoints, so you get two IP addresses. When you create a VPN connection, you're actually configuring two tunnels, one between the AWS outside IP for endpoint one and your customer gateway, specifically the customer gateway outside IP, and another tunnel between AWS endpoint two, specifically the outside IP of that endpoint and your customer gateway outside IP. IP. So those connections are tunnels, they're encrypted between you and AWS, and the data can flow inside of them. In this mini project we're creating two VPN connections. The second connection is another two tunnels between AWS and the second customer router. Those tunnels use what's called a pre-shared key to secure them. To create the tunnel, both sides need to use the same pre-shared key. It's like a complicated password. So that's the outside part, the tunnels, encrypted connections over the internet, and in this case the AWS global network. But you'll also hear me talking about inside the tunnels. Inside the tunnels there are two more IP addresses. Each tunnel has an AWS inside IP and a customer inside IP. And it's using these IPs that BGP runs over and the data is sent over. So BGP traffic runs through this tunnel as well as the data that's running across the VPN connection. When you hear inside IPs, associate this with the actual data and BGP. When you hear outside IP, associate this with the tunnel setup itself, the encrypted connection between AWS and on-premises. So each VPN connection is between AWS and one customer gateway. A connection is two tunnels. Those tunnels connect one customer gateway and at the other end they connect to different AWS endpoints for high availability. So each customer gateway is connected to two different AWS endpoints using a single VPN connection and we're using two of these connections. So we have customer side high availability as well using two customer gateways. So, next we're going to go through the configuration files that we downloaded from AWS for the VPN connections and we're going to extract the important values which I've detailed on screen now. So the inside and outside IP addresses at each end, BGP information and the pre-shared keys. So let's do that quickly before finishing up with this stage of the mini project. Now at this point we need to extract some important configuration items out of the connection connection config documents that we downloaded earlier in this stage of the demo. So we should have two documents, one for the first connection and one for the second. So all I've done on this screen right now is on the right I've opened connection one config.txt and then on the left I've opened the demo value template file that's also attached to this lesson. So this is a template document that I've created which hopefully will make it easier for you to note down all of these important values. So let's get started populating all of the values that we need. So structurally we're extracting values from two different VPN connections. 
The first connection is stored in connection one config. The second connection is stored in connection two config. So inside this template, you have space for both connection one, which is here, and connection two, which is here. Now, in addition to that, there are a number of shared values which apply to both of the connections. So the first thing that we need to obtain is the router1 private IP and the router2 private IP for our simulated on-premises environments. So to do that, move back to the AWS console, go to the CloudFormation console, select the one-click deployment stack, and then click on the Outputs tab. And as outputs, I've configured this template to show you the private IP addresses for router1 and router2. So first copy the private IP address for router 1 into your clipboard and paste that on the top line. Go back to the console and do the same for the router 2 private IP address. Make sure that you do note down the private address, not the public, and then paste that in right below it. Now these two BGP ASNs, we'll be using these later in the demo series, but these are going to be constant, so I've pre-populated those in the template. Now let's start with connection one. So this is the connection between AWS and the on-premises router one. So for connection one, there are two different tunnels, the one on the top and the one on the bottom. Now, this configuration document is also split into two main sections. We've got IPsec Tunnel 1, and then if we scroll down toward the bottom of the file, we've got IPsec Tunnel 2. So all of this configuration information is duplicated in this document. The top is for Tunnel 1, and the bottom is for Tunnel 2. So make sure that you're looking at the document for Connection 1, because if we make any mistakes at this stage, it will prevent the rest of the demo from working. Now, if you prefer to extract all of the information yourself, toward the bottom of this template file are instructions on how you can extract all of these important values. So you can either watch the rest of this video, or you can finish this video and do the extraction on your own, manually using these instructions. But just to make it easier, each of these tunnels will require a pre-shared key. So you can see the pre-shared key, let's go to Tunnel 1, so this is IPsec Tunnel 1, and then under Internet Key Exchange Configuration, you'll see a heading called Pre-shared Key, and you'll need to copy that entire value. Make sure you don't miss any of the characters. Copy that into your clipboard, and paste it into the line for Connection 1 Tunnel 1 Pre-shared Key. Now to get the next information, so on-prem outside IP, just make sure that you're still in the IPsec Tunnel 1 part and just scroll down. Look for the Tunnel Interface Configuration, and this is the one toward the top part of this document. Remember, there are two tunnels in each of these documents. So to get the on-prem outside IP, under Tunnel Interface Configuration, look for outside IP addresses, and then for Customer Gateway, just copy down this IP address. This is the external IP address for the on-prem router one. And then just paste that into that line. And remember, this is for tunnel one. You're also going to need the AWS outside IP address, and that's the line directly below it that's next to virtual private gateway. And again, this is under the outside IP addresses, under tunnel interface configuration, for IPsec Tunnel 1. So make sure you're in the right part of the file. Next, we'll need the on-premises inside IP for Connection 1 Tunnel 1. So straight below this, inside IP addresses, just copy down this entire IP address, including the slash 30. Paste that in. Directly below that is the inside IP address for the AWS side. Copy that into your clipboard. Paste that in. And then just scroll down slightly, and for the Connection 1 Tunnel 1 AWS BGP IP address, you're looking for the neighbor IP address in the BGP configuration options. So just copy that IP address into your clipboard, and just as verification, it should be the same IP address as the line above, only without the slash 30. We'll need to do that same process for Connection 1 Tunnel 2. So just scroll down in this document, locate IPsec Tunnel 2, Internet Key Exchange Information, and then you're looking for Pre-Shared Key. 
So copy the entire string, making sure not to miss any of the characters into your clipboard, and then paste that in for connection one, tunnel two, pre-shared key. And we need to follow the same process to get those other IP addresses. So just scroll down in the document, look for tunnel interface configuration, and then outside IP addresses first, copy the customer gateway IP address, and then paste that in, and this is also the public IP address for the on-premises router one. Remember, both of these tunnels for connection one are going to the same customer gateway. Directly below that, next to virtual private gateway, is the AWS outside IP address for connection one tunnel two, and note this is different for the Connection 1 Tunnel 1 AWS outside IP address because these are different endpoints. Scroll down a little bit more. For inside IP addresses, just copy down the Customer Gateway IP address. That's the on-premises inside IP. Paste that in, including the slash 30. The line directly below it is the AWS inside IP address. So copy that into your clipboard paste that in, and then again, just scroll down a little bit further and get the neighbor IP address inside BGP configuration options. And just as with before, that should be the same IP address as the one directly above it, only without the slash 30. Now at this point, that's all of the information for connection one, which goes between AWS and the on-premises router one. Now we need to open the equivalent document for connection two. So now I've opened connection two config.txt. So this is the document for connection two and I need to follow the same process. So there are two different tunnels as part of this VPN connection. First, I'm looking for IPsec tunnel one, which is at the top of this document. The first value that I need is the pre-shared key. So copy all of that into your clipboard. That's under internet key exchange configuration under IPsec tunnel one, and then scroll down and under tunnel interface configuration, first the outside IP addresses, so copy down the one for the customer gateway, and this is the public IP address of the on-premises router two. Paste that in. Directly below that, next to virtual private gateway, is the outside IP address for endpoint one of this connection. So paste that in. And then scrolling down, we need the inside IP addresses of tunnel one for connection two. So first, copy down the customer gateway, including the slash 30 paste that in. Directly below it is the AWS side inside IP address. Copy that down, paste it in below. Scroll down just a little bit further and then under BGP configuration options, get the neighbor IP address. That should be the same as the IP directly above, only without the slash 30. And then finally, we need to get the information for tunnel two of connection two. So scroll down in the document, under internet key exchange configuration, we need to get the pre-shared key. Again, make sure you do get the entire key because there's often an underscore character at the very start. Make sure you select the entire thing from beginning to end. Paste that in, scroll down, locate tunnel interface configuration, and then again, we need these IP addresses. So first outside IP addresses for the customer gateway, copy and then paste that into the template. Directly below it, next to virtual private gateway, we need to copy this IP address. And this is the AWS outside IP address for tunnel two. Paste that in. Now we're on to the inside IP addresses. So first get the customer inside IP. Again, make sure you get the slash 30, paste that in. Directly below it is the AWS inside IP address for this tunnel. Copy that, paste it in. And then finally, just scroll down under BGP configuration options and get the neighbor IP address. Copy that and paste that in. So that's all of the important configuration information from both of the connection configuration documents that you downloaded in the previous video. And we've extracted that now into this template, which will mean that we've got all of the information that we need to configure the IPsec tunnels at the on-premises side.
So just as a summary as to where we are, we've configured the AWS side of the VPN configuration. We've allocated endpoints that the on-premises side can connect to, and we've downloaded the configuration information for those endpoints. In the next stage of the demo series, we're going to use all of this information that we've extracted to configure the StrongSwan IPsec VPN system that's running on the Ubuntu on-premises routers. So that's what we're going to do in the next stage of this demo series. Now at this point, this is the end of this stage of the mini project. You can use this as an opportunity to take a short break or continue immediately to the next stage of the mini project. So when you're ready, go ahead and move on to the next stage. Welcome back. In stage three of this mini project, you're going to establish the tunnels by configuring the on-premises side of the architecture, or at least part of it. The on-premises side has two layers, the IPsec tunnels, which you'll configure in this stage of the mini project, and the BGP system, which you'll configure in the next. So let's hop over to the console and get started activating the four IPsec tunnels that we're going to be using. That's two tunnels to each on-premises router, one of those between each router and each of the two AWS endpoints. So let's get started implementing that configuration, and to do that we're going to move to the AWS console. Now this is going to be the most complex part of this demo series. There's going to be a lot of command line work that we need to do to configure the on-premises routers to be able to establish IPsec tunnels between the on-premises side and the AWS side. Now a really important thing that you need to check before you implement this stage of the demo series is that both of the VPN connections are in an available state. You might have to refresh it, but make sure before you continue, both of these are showing available and in green. If not, you might need to wait a short while until that is the case, but you cannot complete the next step until both of these are in an available state. Assuming they are, we can go ahead and close down this tab and we'll need to move to the EC2 console. So click on EC2 or type it in the Find Services box. Select Instances. Now there's going to be some configuration that we need to do on both of the on-premises routers in order to establish the IPsec tunnels between that router and AWS. So let's start with router one. So select router one, right click, click connect, select session manager, and once you're able, click on the connect button. Now once you're connected, type sudo space bash and press enter. This will give you root permissions on this Linux instance and then type cd space forward slash home forward slash ubuntu forward slash demo underscore assets and press enter. Now don't worry, all of the commands that we use within this stage of the demo series are contained in the stage three instructions attached to this video. Now let's clear the screen to make it easier to see and then do an ls space hyphen la. Now in order to make this more efficient, I've already downloaded to both of these instances some configuration files with placeholders that you just need to edit. So there's the ipsec.com file, which contains the actual configuration for the ipsec tunnels. There's the ipsec.secrets file, which contains the authentication information that this Linux server will use to authenticate with AWS. And then there's a script file, ipsec-vti.sh, which will actually enable and disable the IPsec tunnels whenever the system detects traffic. So we need to edit each of these, put them in the correct place, and then restart the instance to activate these tunnels. Within these files are a number of placeholders, and you'll notice that the name of these placeholders is the same as in the template file that you populated during the previous step. 
Now I do go relatively quickly in these videos when I'm doing the replacing, but you should find it fairly simple if you just take note of the name of each of the placeholders and then look for the corresponding value within the template document that you populated, it should be relatively easy to make sure that you get the correct values. So just use this video as a guide on where these placeholders are, but you should use the values in your template to quickly replace these placeholders. So let's start by editing the ipsec.com file. We'll do that with nano space ipsec.conf and press enter. Now if we just scroll down, inside this configuration file there's the configuration for the two ipsec tunnels. So at the top here, tunnel 1, and at the bottom, tunnel 2. Now we need to replace these placeholders with the corresponding values from the template document that you entered all of that configuration information into in the previous stage of this demo. So let's start doing that. So this is for connection 1, and this top component here is for tunnel 1. So make sure you're using the correct values. Again, if you make a mistake at this point, it will affect the demo later on. So under tunnel 1, next to left, leave the equal sign, and you need to paste in the router 1 private IP. So in all likelihood yours will be different, but it should start with 192.168.12 and then something else. There's a small chance you might have the same, but in all likelihood it's going to be different. So that's actually the internal network interface of this customer router. So next we need to change the placeholder directly below it. And this is the customer outside IP address that will also be inside the template document. And this should be the public IP address of the on-premises router one. And again, yours will be different. And then next, we need to replace these placeholders with the outside IP address of the AWS side. So this will also be in the template document. And I've kept the names consistent, so these should have the same names in this document and the template document. So paste that in, and you'll be pasting in the same value directly below it. Next, we need to do the same process for connection 1, tunnel 2. So just scroll down, and we'll need to first replace this line with the private IP address. So that's the router 1 private IP address, and this will be the same as this top line for tunnel 1. So some of these values are the same, some of them though will be different. So paste in the private IP address for router 1. Directly below it, we'll need the public IP address for router 1, which is listed as con1 tunnel 2 on-prem outside IP in the template document. And again, you'll notice that this will be the same as the corresponding value directly above, and that's fine. Next, we'll need to edit both of these AWS side outside IP addresses. So look in the template document for con1 tunnel 2 AWS outside IP. Paste that in and do the same for the line below. Now note that these two lines are different from the corresponding lines above. So remember that a tunnel goes from one specific customer router to one AWS endpoint. So the tunnel at the top, so tunnel 1, will be going to a different AWS endpoint than the tunnel at the bottom, which is tunnel 2. So for the right IP addresses, they will be different than the right IP addresses in tunnel 1 at the top, and that's okay. So that's everything that we need to update, just double check that you've got those values correct, because if you haven't, it will impact the demo later on. So press Ctrl O and then Enter to save that file, and then Ctrl X to exit. And then we're going to edit the second file, and this is ipsec.secrets. This time we're going to need to change a total of six placeholder values. So to try and keep this efficient, let's do the starting value first. So connection 1, tunnel 1, on-prem, outside IP. So this is the public IP version 4 address for router 1. Copy that into your clipboard. Now this is actually going to be what we're going to replace the first value on both of these lines with. So this is going to be the on-premise outside IP for both of these lines. They're the same IP address. So you can save some time by just pasting both of those in. Next, we need the connection 1, tunnel 1, AWS outside IP address. 
This will be different for both of these lines. So don't paste in the same IP address by mistake. So the top line is for connection one, tunnel one. The bottom line is for connection one, tunnel two. Next, we'll need the pre-shared key for connection one, tunnel one. So delete this placeholder. And again, make sure you do copy all of the characters for this pre-shared key. It's very easy to miss a character. I've done it many times. So just double check that value. And then do the same for the pre-shared key for connection one, tunnel two. Again, making sure to get all of the characters. Once you've done that, just save that file. And that's the authentication information for both of the tunnels for connection one. The next file we need to edit is the script that brings up the IPsec tunnels whenever required. So nano space IPsec hyphen vti.sh. Now there are four placeholders that we need to replace in this document. These are the inside IP addresses at the customer side and the AWS side for both of these tunnels. So delete the placeholder and replace it with the same value inside the template document. So this is connection one, tunnel one, on-premise, inside IP address. Paste that in and make sure that you leave the slash 30 on the end. Then we'll need to do the same for the remote side, which is the AWS side. So replace this with connection one, tunnel one, AWS, inside IP. And just as verification, this should be exactly the same, only one less. Then we need to do the same for tunnel two. So get connection one, tunnel two, on-prem, inside IP. So just delete the placeholder. And then paste in connection one, tunnel two, on-prem, inside IP, making sure that you leave the slash 30 on the end. And we need to do the same for the remote side, which is the AWS side inside IP. So this is connection one, tunnel two, AWS inside IP. And as verification, that should be one value less, but otherwise exactly the same as the IP address above. Once you've done that, just verify the values. It's really important that these are correct. So press Control O and then Enter to save that file and then Control X to exit. Now at this point, we're going to copy all of these three IPsec configuration files into the etc directory where they'll be read by the StrongSwan software. So do a cp space ipsec star, so that's a wildcard indicating all of the IPsec files, and then a space forward slash etc. And then one last thing that you need to do is make the script file executable. So do a chmod space plus x for executable forward slash etc forward slash ipsec hyphen vti dot sh and then press enter. That will make that script executable. And then to test this, we need to restart the strong swan software. To do that, system ctl space restart space strong swan all one word lowercase and press enter now if everything's working as it should you can run an if config and you should see two virtual tunnel interfaces vti1 and vti2 and if you do that means these tunnel interfaces are active and connected to aws so that's everything that we need to do for this on-premises router. Now we need to close this tab and do the same for the on-premises router too. So let's go ahead and do that. Close this tab, select on-prem-router2, right click, select connect, session manager, wait until you're able, click on connect. Now I'm going to speed up this process because you've already followed this for the first customer router. So sudo bash, cd space, home, Ubuntu, demo assets, press enter, clear the screen, just do a file listing, everything's there, that looks good. We're going to edit the first file, so nano space ipsec.conf, press enter. Remember now we're editing the values for connection two. So connection two, tunnel one, and connection two, tunnel two. So scroll down and first we need to replace this with the router two private IP. 
So that's in your template document. Copy that in and paste it in. Then we need the connection to tunnel one on-prem outside IP. This is the public IP address of router two. Make sure you do copy the right one. It's connection two tunnel one on-prem outside IP. This will be different than the IP address of router one, which you did in the previous part of this stage of the demo. So this is the external IP address of router two. Then we need the outside IP address for AWS for connection to tunnel one. Again, these are named the same in the template document and you'll be able to paste this value in twice for both of these lines. Then we'll move on to tunnel two. Again, we'll need the private IP address of router two. Then again, you'll need the public IP address of router two. So that's listed in the document as connection to tunnel two on-prem outside IP. Paste that in. Those two lines will be the same as the corresponding lines in the section above. That's fine. Next, we need to edit the outside IPs for the AWS side. So again, inside the template document where you extracted all of this information, connection to tunnel two AWS outside IP, and you'll be able to paste the same value on the line directly below. Paste that in, press Control O and then enter to save that file and then Control X to exit. So that's the IPsec tunnels. Next, we're going to do the secrets document, which stores the authentication information. And again, as before, the first two entries on both lines are the public IP address of router two. So we can use the same IP address. So look for connection two tunnel one on-prem outside IP in the template document, and you can paste that in for both of these items on both lines. The next item will be different for both lines. So this is the AWS side outside IP, and you'll need connection two tunnel one AWS outside IP. Paste that in. This time you'll need connection to tunnel two AWS outside IP. Paste that in. Again, make sure those are different, otherwise you won't be able to connect. Now we're going to replace these pre-shared keys. You'll first need the pre-shared key for tunnel one. So this will be connection to tunnel one pre-shared key. Paste that in. Again, being doubly sure not to miss any characters. And then you'll need to replace the second placeholder with connection to tunnel two pre-shared key. So paste that in. Again, please make sure that you're not missing any characters. Press control O and then enter to save that file and then control X to exit. Then last, we're going to edit the ipsec-vti.sh script. And we've got these same four placeholders to fix. So start with the first tunnel, VTI1, and we're going to change the local address. So just delete this placeholder. This is the connection to tunnel one on-premise inside IP. Make sure you've got the slash 30 on the end. Next, we'll need connection to tunnel one AWS inside IP. It should be the same IP address except one lower. Make sure you've got the slash 30 on the end. And then for VTI2, we'll do the same process. This time, connection to tunnel two on-prem inside IP. Again, I keep repeating this, do make sure that you leave the slash 30 on the end. And then for the next line, connection to tunnel two AWS inside IP. It should be the same IP address, one less, and make sure you've got the slash 30 on the end. Press control O and then enter to save that file and then control X to exit. Then we're going to copy all those files. So CP space IPsec star space forward slash ETC. Then we need to make that script executable chmod space plus X space forward slash ETC forward slash IPsec hyphen VTI dot SH. And then we need to restart StrongSwan to bring up these IPsec tunnels. So system CTL space restart space strong and then swan, all one word, lowercase. Press enter. 
and that will bring up both of the IPsec tunnels from the customer on-premises router 2 through to the AWS side. And we can verify that by typing ifconfig and pressing enter. And if everything's working as expected, again, you should see two VTI interfaces, VTI1 and VTI2. Now, if we go back to the AWS console, click on services, type VPC and open that in a new tab. This might be delayed by a few minutes, but what you should be able to do is to scroll down, click on site to site VPN connections, you'll see the two connections that we configured in an earlier stage of this demo. Find the one for router one because that's the one that we configured the longest ago. Select it, click on tunnel details. Now you'll see that the tunnels are down and that's because we don't yet have BGP connectivity. But what you should see under details is that IPsec is up. And that indicates that the IPsec tunnels between the on-premises router 1 and AWS are up and functional. And you should see the same with the second connection. Because we've only just completed this, it might still say IPsec is down. So just click on refresh. It might take a couple of seconds to show both connections as being up from an IPsec perspective. You'll still see that both of them are down in status because we don't yet have BGP, but after a few moments, you should see both of these tunnels change from IPsec is down to IPsec is up. And there we go, after a couple of minutes and a couple more refreshes, both of the tunnels for both of the connections are now showing as IPsec is up, which means these tunnels are active, the connectivity between the on-premises router 1 and router 2 through to AWS is working, and we can use these tunnels to establish BGP sessions and route traffic through them in the next stage of this demo lesson. Now at this point, this is the end of this stage of the mini project. You can use this as an opportunity to take a short break or continue immediately to the next stage of the mini project. So when you're ready, go ahead and move on to the next stage. At the end of the last part, you'd configured four IPsec tunnels between four AWS endpoints and both of the customer routers. In this part of the mini project, you're going to configure BGP to run over the top of these four IPsec tunnels. Once done, the VPN will be fully functional and you can test it by pinging from both sides. Now, there are two main tasks to do in this video of the mini project. First, you're going to install FRR using a script which I've pre-installed on router 1 and router 2, and then you'll configure FRR to use BGP and share routing information with AWS, and that configuration needs to be performed on both on-premises routers. So let's go ahead and move across to the AWS console and get this last bit configured. So all I've done is I've closed down all of the tabs that we used during the previous stage of this demo. And just to confirm, in this stage of the demo series, you're going to utilize the IPsec tunnels that you configured in the previous stage and configure BGP to work across those tunnels and exchange routing information with AWS. Now we need to do this process on both routers. So select on-prem hyphen router one, right click, connect, Click Session Manager and then Connect. Now again, all of the commands that you'll need for this stage of the demo are contained in the instructions attached to this video. Go ahead and type sudo space bash, then cd forward slash home, forward slash Ubuntu, forward slash demo underscore assets and press enter. Then we'll do a listing, so ls space hyphen la, there's a script in this folder which is used to install the BGP application. So we need to make that script executable. So chmod space plus x space ffrouting hyphen install dot sh. Press enter. And then we'll need to run that install process. So do a period forward slash ffrouting hyphen install dot sh and press enter. Now that process can take quite some time to complete anywhere up to 20 minutes. So we need to wait for that to finish before we move on to the next step. Now we can be efficient at this point and do the same process on the on-premises router too. 
So let's move back to the EC2 console, select on-prem hyphen router 2 and do the same. So right click, connect, select session manager, click connect, wait for that to connect, sudo space bash, cd forward slash home, ubuntu, demo underscore assets, chmod space plus x space ffrouting hyphen install dot sh, press enter, and then start off that install process with period forward slash ffrouting hyphen install dot sh. Press enter, and again that process can take anywhere up to 20 minutes, and that will need to complete before we can move on. So go ahead and pause the video, wait for both of these installation processes to complete, and then we can continue with this stage of the demo lesson. So at this point, both of our on-premises routers have finished installing FRR, which provides BGP capability. Now, before we move on, I just want to demonstrate that at this point, our AWS network knows nothing about our on-premises network, and our on-premises network doesn't have any routing information for AWS. So on either of these customer routers, if you just type route and press enter, if I switch over to customer router one, this also knows about the public network, so 192.168.12.0, and it also knows about the other private network, 192.168.10.0. But it has no knowledge of any of the AWS networks, which are 10.16.0.0 slash 16. If we move across to the AWS console, and let's click on the services drop-down, and open a tab to the VPC console, click on transit gateway route tables, you should only have one, but just expand it, make it easier to see, and then click on the routes tab, and you'll note how on the AWS side, it only knows about 10.16.0.0 slash 16, which is the AWS side VPC. So neither of these isolated environments has any awareness of the other. So we're going to change that. We're going to configure BGP to run across all of these IPsec tunnels. Now to do that, just switch back across to the EC2 console and just close down these two open tabs to router 1 and router 2. It's easier if we explicitly connect into one of these at a time and perform the configuration. So let's choose router 1, so right click, select connect, go to session manager, click on connect. Again, this will connect us into this instance. And we'll do the same process, so sudo bash, and we're going to configure BGP. Now, all of these commands that you'll use are contained in this stage's instructions that are attached to this video. So you can either type them in from that document or watch me do it on this video. Now, in order to configure FR Routing's BGP capability, we need to go into the shell that's used to configure that product. And in order to do that, we need to do VTYSH and press Enter. Now, for anyone with any networking experience, the rest of the commands might seem familiar. So first we'll type conf space t, which puts us into configuration mode. Next we'll type frr space defaults space traditional and press enter. Now we're configuring BGP routing for the on-premises side of this architecture. If you recall from earlier stages of this demo series, I mentioned how both sides of these BGP sessions required unique ASNs. And the ASN that we've decided on for the on-premises side is 65016. And so we need to configure that BGP ASN on these routers. And we do that by typing router space BGP space 65016. 016 and press enter. So now we're setting the BGP configuration for our side of the BGP relationship and what we need to define are BGP neighbors. So these are the other IP addresses which this customer router will exchange routing information with. And the way that we do that 
is to use the BGP IP addresses that AWS provide. And these IP addresses are the same as the tunnel inside IP addresses. So we need to configure our BGP system to communicate with the AWS BGP IP addresses. And those IP addresses are at the other end of these IPsec tunnels. So let's configure that. So we're currently on customer router one, and so we have connection one, tunnel one, and connection one, tunnel two. So we need to set up BGP neighbors for both of those. Now we'll do that using this command. So neighbor space, and then an IP address space, remote hyphen AS, and then the ASN of AWS, which is 64512. So we're configuring a relationship between our ASN, which is 65016, and the AWS ASN that's used by the transit gateway, which is 64512. So we need to configure the BGP IP address for connection 1, tunnel 1. Now this IP address is one of those that's inside the template document that you populated in an earlier stage of this demo lesson. So you need to copy the connection one, tunnel one, AWS BGP IP. So copy that into your clipboard and paste that in. And once you've done that, press enter. Next, we're going to do the same process, but for the second IPsec tunnel that's connected to this router. So paste in this command. This time, we need to replace this placeholder with connection one, tunnel two. So delete this placeholder. And this value is also in the template document. So connection one, tunnel two, AWS, BGP, IP. So paste that in. And again, this is configuring another BGP relationship between our instance of BGP and the one that's running on the transit gateway. Only this one runs over the second tunnel, which uses a different AWS endpoint. So this is why high availability works when you use multiple IPsec tunnels. So press enter. Next, we're going to use this command, which is just a configuration option that's required to make our instance of BGP work with AWS. So just paste that in and press enter. What this does exactly is beyond the scope of this demo series. It's something that we would cover at an advanced specialty level. For now, just type that in and press enter. Next, we're going to configure which networks are advertised by our instance of BGP. We don't want to have to manually specify those because that would defeat the purpose of this being a dynamic VPN. So we're going to configure it so that this instance of BGP advertises any networks that it's aware of. So to do that, we need to change mode. So address hyphen family space IPv4 space unicast and press enter and to configure the router to redistribute any addresses that it's aware of we use this command redistribute space connected and press enter now that's all that we need to do we've configured this instance of bgp to communicate with two different aws neighbors and configured our instance of bgp to redistribute any networks that we're aware of so all that remains is to exit this, save the config, and then restart this router to initiate the session with AWS. So type exit hyphen address hyphen family and press enter. Type exit again and press enter. Exit again and press enter. WR for write and press enter. Exit again to exit the shell and then sudo space reboot to reboot this on-premises router. We'll be disconnected, that's okay. And we need to follow the same process for router two. So select router two, connect, session manager, connect, sudo space bash, just run a route to verify that it's not aware of AWS. Type VTYSH to move into the FR routing console. And we need to follow the same process, only this time, using the BGP neighbor IPs from the different set of tunnels. Remember, this is router two. It uses a different VPN connection with two different tunnels. So we start with conf space T, 
FRR space defaults, space traditional. Now both of the on-premises routers use the same ASN. So we need to configure with router space, BGP space, 65016. Then we need to configure the BGP neighbors. So paste this line in again. This is in the instructions for this stage of the demo. And the IP address to replace for this placeholder is in the template that you created earlier. So in this case, it's connection to tunnel one AWS BGP IP. So copy that into your clipboard, paste that in and press enter. So that's the BGP neighbor for connection to tunnel one. Now we need to do the same for connection to tunnel two. So paste this in, delete the placeholder and the IP address for this is the BGP IP address for connection to tunnel two. So in the template document that you created, it's connection to tunnel two AWS BGP IP. So paste that in and press enter. Again, we need this command to ensure that our instance of BGP can interoperate with AWS. So enter that and press enter. And then once again, we need to configure which networks are broadcast from our instance of BGP. So address hyphen family space IPv4 space unicast and press enter. We want to redistribute any connected networks. So redistribute space connected, press enter. And that's all of the configuration required on router two. So exit hyphen address hyphen family, press enter. Exit again, press enter. Exit again, press enter. WR to write the config. Exit again, and then sudo space reboot to reboot router two. So now you've configured BGP on both of the on-premises routers. So router one and router two, and you've restarted them. So they should now have established a BGP session with AWS. Now this part might take a few minutes, so be patient. But if you click on the services dropdown and open the VPC console in a new tab, once that's opened, just scroll down on the left and look for site to site VPN connections. Find the one for the on-premises router one, which is the one that you did first. Select it, select tunnels, and you should see both of the tunnels are in the up state and scrolling to the right under details, you should see a number of BGP routes that are being exchanged as part of this connection. Just verify the same is true for the other connection. You might need to refresh a couple of times, but we can see that both of the tunnels for connection two are also in the up state and they show two BGP routes. Now, if you move across to transit gateway route tables, also on the menu on the left, select the transit gateway route table, select routes. Now you should be able to see all of the networks being advertised by the on-premises infrastructure. So 192.168.10.11 and .12 are all being advertised dynamically using BGP from the on-premises routers through to the transit gateway. So that's all happened without us having to configure any static routing. And if we were to add another subnet at the on-premises side, that too would be advertised and automatically configured within the transit gateway. Now, because the transit gateway does have a VPC attachment, it should mean that we can communicate from the VPC instances at the AWS side through to the on-premises side and vice versa. Before we do that though, go back to the EC2 console, select one of the on-premises routers, right click, select connect, choose session manager, type sudo space bash, and then type route. And now you should see the route table has been updated with 10.16.0.0, which is the side range used at the AWS side. And you should note that for interface, it will list either VTI1 or VTI2. These are the IPsec tunnels that are connected between this customer router and AWS. 
Now we can see more details about this if we type VTYSH and then do a show space IP space route and press enter. Now the C symbol next to these means these are connected routes, so things that are connected directly to this particular operating system. The line at the top with B means that this is a BGP learned route. And you'll be able to see that 10.16.0.0 slash 16 has been learned via both VTI1 and VTI2. So we have high availability using this VPN because we can get to this AWS side network through either of the IPsec tunnels. And the same configuration is true on the on-premises router too. So the on-premises side now has four independent paths to get from the on-premises networks through to AWS. And the same is true in reverse. So now we have a highly available VPN architecture that can survive the failure of an availability zone at the AWS side or the failure of a customer premises router at the on-premises side. Now to test this, to test everything's working successfully, go back to the EC2 console and select Instances. Select the on-prem-server1 and just copy down its private IP address and then connect to AWS-EC2-A. So we're going to use Session Manager again. So connect to it. And once connected, we're going to ping the on-premises network. So ping space, and then paste in the IP address that's in your clipboard and press Enter. And we're now receiving a ping response from AWS to our on-premises network. Let's try the same in reverse, close that tab. Get the IP address of EC2-A, copy that into your clipboard, select on-prem-server1 and connect to that using Session Manager. And let's try to ping one of the AWS instances. So ping, space, and then paste in the IP address that you just copied for EC2-A. And you'll also get a ping response to this ping. So because we've got a dynamic VPN in place, this traffic is free to go via any of the available tunnels. The things that you've done in every stage of this demo lesson could equally be applied to this simulation and real-world implementations. So you have now implemented an extreme availability implementation of site-to-site -site VPN using Global Accelerator. It uses dynamic routing, performance is increased by using the AWS global network, and it has extreme high availability with two customer locations, two VPN connections, and, and each of those has two tunnels going from two AWS endpoints back to the customer endpoints. This is a truly highly available dynamic design. Now at this point, this is the end of this stage of the mini project. You can use this as an opportunity to take a short break or continue immediately to the next stage of the mini project. So when you're ready, go ahead and move on to the next stage. Welcome back to the last stage of this demo series where we're going to tidy up the account and return it back to the state as it was before we started. So to do that, you'll need to move to the VPC console first. We'll need to delete the VPN connections that we've created. So on the menu on the left, select site to site VPN connections. Select each of these, click on actions and delete. And this will delete the connection information. So both of the tunnels as part of this connection will terminate and the connection itself will be deleted. We'll need to do the same for the other connection. Wait for both of those to change to deleted. Select customer gateways and do the same for both of these. So select one, actions, delete, confirm. Then the other one, actions, delete, confirm. Click on the services drop down. Start typing cloud formation and select it from the list. Select the one click deployment stack, click delete and confirm. 
and once that stack's been deleted, the accounts are back in the same state as they were at the start of this demo series. At this point, congratulations, you've completed all of the activities in this demo series. You've completed a really complex implementation of the site-to-site -site VPN between AWS and a simulated on-premises environment. You've done the same steps in this demo lesson as you'd be required to do when configuring this in the real world. And so by completing this demo lesson, you've gained valuable practical experience that you can reuse in real world employment situations or when discussing this type of architecture in a job interview. The VPN that you've implemented is an example of the most complex architecture that you can implement using site-to-site -site VPNs. You've used a transit gateway complete with VPN attachments. You've elected to utilize the accelerated VPNs feature, which uses the global AWS network to transit the traffic from the customer routers through to the transit gateway. And rather than creating a static VPN or one that uses only one tunnel, you've used BGP to dynamically exchange routes between the customer routers and the transit gateway. So you have full dynamic routing and true high availability using four different IPsec tunnels between the customer routers and each of the four different AWS side endpoints. So this is a really good set of experience that I've no doubt you'll utilize in the real world if you ever need to design and implement VPN solutions within AWS and on-premise networks. With that being said, this is the end of this demo series. I hope you enjoyed it and that it gave you some good practical experience of all of the technologies that form part of this solution. Go ahead and complete this video. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in another exciting advanced demo lesson.